All right, welcome everyone to the Zojo webinar. I am Paul Lefevre, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. And our topic this time is how to use Zojo to simplify your software development. So people need apps. I get asked all the time, hey, you know what would be a great idea? You know what I need? So take a moment, think about a project that you do at work or at home or pretty much anywhere. And then have you ever wondered, you know, I wish there was an app for that to make that a little easier for me to do, maybe automate it or something. Or maybe you already make software and you just wish you could maybe make your apps a little bit more easily. Maybe you, it's taking you too long, too expensive, you're spending too much money on them. Well, one reason that can happen is mainstream development tools are kind of frustrating. They require a lot of setup, a lot of configuration, a lot of dependencies you have to install. Now, they're big, they can be powerful, but they can be complicated. So if any of these things apply to you, interest you, you might want to think that Zojo is the solution. And this is what Zojo is. This is a quick uh, teaser here. We'll actually look at it uh, live in a, in a few minutes and see, uh, actually look at this example project a little bit more closely. And this is one of the desktop examples, but you can see this is how the Zojo uh, tool itself looks. But a little bit of background first. So a little bit about Zojo. So what is Zojo? Well, it's a programming language, first of all. And the programming language, not coincidentally, is called Zojo. It's a framework, actually a collection of frameworks, because it lets you build many different app types. But this allows you to interface with the computer without having to understand the lower level programming interfaces. Zojo is also an integrated development environment. So the code editor is built in, the layout designer is built in. Everything is all in one app, essentially, that you will use to make your own apps. So Zojo allows you to develop faster. And that's pretty important. Zojo is also free to use. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit more later. And if you haven't heard of Zojo before, uh, we've actually been around since 1998. So this will be our 20th year. Zojo first started off by making desktop apps for Mac OS, the old version, the classic version before the uh, the Mac OS 10 switch. And then it, over the years, added more capabilities, the ability to work with Windows, the ability to work with Linux, the web, lots of other things. And speaking of that, Zojo does a lot. First of all, Zojo itself, the app you use to make your own apps, runs on a variety of platforms. You can use it on Windows if that's your preferred operating system. You can run it on Mac. You can run it on Linux. And in all those cases, it's a 64-bit IDE. So it blends in well with all the current versions of all the operating systems, can use whatever memory you have available. So you get to choose the version of Zojo you want to work with the operating system that you prefer. Zojo lets you make desktop apps. This is the thing it's been able to do right from the beginning, but these days it can make desktop apps as native apps. So these are native compiled apps. There's no runtime associated with it or anything like that. And these apps are going to be separate apps for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, and even for the Raspberry Pi. These desktop apps can be built as 64-bit using our new integrated LLVM compiler. And if you've never heard of the LLVM compiler, that's kind of a toolkit really more than a compiler. But that's the same toolkit developed and used by Apple for a lot of their stuff, including Swift. High DPI stands for high dots per inch displays, which uh, essentially just means the super high res displays. Like on Macs, you, you would see them called retina displays, but like a 4K or a 5K display. So Zojo has full support for that in the IDE itself, but also for you to use to make your own apps so that they can take advantage of those high-resolution displays. And related to desktop apps, Zojo can also make console apps, which are essentially, you can think of, those, think of them like command line apps. They would run on the terminal or the command line. 
They can run in the background. They can run as Windows services on Windows, that sort of thing. In addition to desktop apps, Zojo can make web apps. There's a few different ways that these uh, web apps can present themselves. Uh, the easiest way is typically the standalone web app, which you just, you essentially, you, you build your app as a web app and you copy the, uh, the executable over to your web server and run it. And that's it. It has a built-in web server in the web app, so you don't have to do any other configuration and people can connect to your web app and use it in their browser. Zojo also has support so that your web app can instead use CGI to communicate with an existing web server you may already have, typically Apache. And then for those that need the ultimate in simplicity and convenience, we offer the Zojo Cloud Service, which allows you to deploy a web app by just clicking a single button in the Zojo IDE. You just click deploy, your web app is built, uploaded to Zojo Cloud, and then instantly available for anyone to use. Much like desktop apps, Zojo web apps are also compiled. They can be 64-bit and they're compiled also using LLVM. So these aren't scripts that sit on your server or anything like that. These are actual compiled apps that let people connect to them from a web browser. And your web apps can also, of course, support high DPI and you can also implement web services using Zojo web apps. Most recently, Sojo added support for iOS apps. These are fully native iOS apps. They are 64-bit, also compiled using LLVM Toolkit. And they, because they're native and they're 64-bit, you can flip a switch in Zojo and generate a build that you can then just submit to the App Store to make your app available for free, to sell, however you want. And I don't have a bullet point here for it, but Zojo is in the process of working on adding Android support. So you'll be able to make Android apps using Zojo. That is targeted for 2018. And the last little tidbit is the Zojo IDE itself is actually made using Zojo. It's been this way for over 10 years now. And that's a good way to see just how powerful Zojo is because you know, essentially, you know, we use Zojo to design the IDE that you use every day when you're working with Zojo. So creating apps with Zojo couldn't really be easier. You start off, you choose your project type. You typically design your app layout. You write code. And the code you write in Zojo is object-oriented. And the programming language is very similar to Visual Basic with an object-oriented model that's also very similar to Java and Python. You then do the run, test, and debug cycle right from within the Zojo IDE itself. You don't have to switch to other tools. You can just press the run button to run your app, test it out, debug it with the built-in debugger, all right from within Zojo. And these steps that I've listed right here, you get to do and use in the free version of Zojo. The only time you'll need to purchase Zojo is when you're ready to build and deploy your app. So all the rest, you can download Zojo, you can use it, you can try it out, you can make sample apps, test them, run them, all that fun stuff. And when you have an app that you're happy with, you're ready to build and deploy, or you start to see how quickly Zojo lets you make apps and you're eager to get started building your own, you buy a license and then you can build and deploy your apps however you want. So let's switch over to Zojo proper and take a quick look at some apps. All right. First, I'm gonna start with a blank new project just so you can see the initial steps here. So when you start Zojo, you get the choose a project window. You can see the various project types that are here, uh, the four main ones, desktop, web, console, and iOS. And if you just wanted to create a simple project, you could just type a name there, click OK, and you'll get the blank Zojo workspace window that we call it. 
And here, you know, the layout editor is right there on the screen. You can just drag controls around, position things how you want. This is a window. You can add as many windows as you want to a project. We'll look at one that's a little more advanced in a moment. Controls can have events, so you can click on toolbar buttons to add event handlers. So in the case of a button, you can add the action event to the button. This is where you can put some code here. Very simple code, I know. And to run and test, you just press the run button. And your app runs quickly and you can test out its functionality. So you can see it's super easy to get started. Now let's move away from that and look at a couple, well, one of the example projects that ships with Zojo and one of the more sophisticated ones. So you can see what a full bone app might look like in desktop web and iOS forms. So we call this app Eddie's Electronics. And before we, we dive in, I'm gonna just run it real quick so you can see what it looks like. This is kind of a demo of a, a simple store with a customer list and you can click on customers, get their information, see on a map where they are, see what uh, things they've ordered, that sort of thing. Display a, a graph. So that just shows off a few of the things you can build with Zojo. And this is what the project looks like. Now this isn't super large project, but you can get a feel for how something looks. You can see there's multiple windows in here. This is the main customer info window. There's a smaller search window that can appear to search for a specific customer. The about window. This is the window that popped up to show some specifics about the invoice that was selected. And the way the Zojo IDE works is as I'm clicking, I'm seeing the various things, but if I wanted to work on multiple things, I can just right click on it and open it in a new tab. And then I can have multiple things open at once to jump around. And code, what about the code? These are all just controls that are on here. As I click on them, you can see them show up here in the left on the navigator, but also more importantly on the right in the inspector, you can see the properties for every control. So you can just often flip switches, type in values, and there's various type of controls. You get a grid list box control here for displaying amounts of data. You get the typical labels and text fields and a variety of buttons and all that good stuff. And if I go to the window on this particular thing, I can expand the methods. And I can see, start to see some code, what that looks like. This particular code is loading data from a database and then looping through the data that was returned using this while loop and adding it to the list so it displays on the screen. This particular app does use a database, a SQLite database to be precise. So it primarily works with uh, databases by retrieving data and saving it and that sort of thing. So that's kind of a, a high level of what an app looks like from a structural standpoint. This is a desktop app. Now, one cool thing about this is you know, right now I'm running on a Mac, of course. And when I click run, it ran the Mac version. And if I click down here on this computer, you'll see it's showing me the settings for the Mac and it's telling me it's gonna run it as 64 bit. And I don't have a license installed right now. Um, I upgraded to High Sierra, probably part of the problem with Zoom I had earlier and it uh, I need to pull down new licenses. But if I wanted to build and I had a license, I would just click the build button. And if I wanted to build for multiple platforms, that's all I need to do. I just need to check those boxes, click build, and I'll get a folder full of apps. I'll get a folder for Windows with the Windows app. I'll get a folder for Linux with the Linux app. And I'll get a folder for Mac with the Mac app. And that's it. I don't need different UI layouts. I don't need to write different code. I can write code that, for example, only runs on Windows if it's a Windows specific thing. But generally speaking, you don't have to do that. You could even have separate windows if you wanted a specific window that was unique to running on Linux, say. 
But again, generally speaking, you would just use the same layout on all the three platforms. And when it's built, it'll be a native app, it'll use native controls, and it'll all just work. Let's switch over to the web version. So here you can see Zojo with a web project open. And it doesn't really look all that different. Instead of a window with uh, controls on it, you now have what's called a web page with controls on it. Many of the controls are similar. Text fields in this case, list box grid to show information. Uh, this is a picture control that, that showed the picture of the customer. All that good stuff. But otherwise, it really is going to work the same from, uh, you know, uh, you're going to drag controls around, position them how you want. The source code is still displayed in methods. Looks like, you know, typical code editor. So working with it, very, very similar. When you go to run a web project, it's going to build it for you. Launch the standalone web app, which essentially has its own built-in web server, and then it'll fire up your web browser to connect to the, the web server that's running locally on your computer. And you can use the web app. And you can see what it looks like. And again, this looks very similar to the desktop app, app design. So just web apps let you, build, let you build web apps that essentially look very similar and work very similar to desktop apps, which makes users pretty comfortable with them. All right, switching from the web app, we can go to the iOS app. So here you can see, again, how similar everything looks. In this case, the, the layouts look, you know, it looks like a phone, right? So here you can see, because this is a phone, the layouts are smaller, so they're kind of split. So rather than showing everything on a tiny phone screen at once, there's several different views. And as you tap and move around, something new will display on the screen. Let's just run this real quick so you can see what that looks like. This is going to build the web app. I'm not sorry, we're doing the iOS app. It's going to build the iOS app, and then it's going to automatically start the iOS simulator for you. This is Apple's iOS simulator. So we have to wait for it to boot. And then... Once it starts up, it automatically launches your Zojo app so you can test it. And you see I can click on a particular entry in there. So I displayed a particular customer by clicking on it. I can also display their invoices. I can tap down here to see the sales chart and I can scroll through to view the whole thing. So again, you can see that it looks similar to the other two, but it is designed to fit on a smaller phone screen. And in all of these cases, if we go back quickly to the desktop app and say we want to open up a method here, and we'll pick this one here, part of your testing and debugging routine you can see these little hyphens that show up in the gutter of the code editor. I can just click on one of them and I'll get a red dot. That's a breakpoint in the debugger. So when I run the project and do something to trigger that code, right here you'll see that Zojo pops back up. The line of code at the breakpoint is highlighted to tell you this is where we are in the code. You can see a list of variables. You can step through this line by line check things as it's running, or just decide to continue along your merry way. All right, I have a question here from Jim asking if there are plugins available to, integ to facilitate integration with Amazon Web Services. And in many cases, there, there are plugins. There is a plugin vendor called Monkey Bread that has a variety of plugins, but Zojo also comes with a HTTP socket control. 
that also can often communicate directly with these type of web services. I know we have quite a few customers that are working with Amazon web services for a variety of things. In addition to that, the default database plugins that ship with Zojo for Postgres and MySQL also do connect to those uh, things if you have them set up on Amazon as well. And I have a question here from Dennis regarding Zojo having authenticated and access permissions for apps. Um, is it live? I'm not sure I understand this question, so I'm going to probably think the answer to it is no. But there's no specific things built into Zojo regarding authentication and access on a server-side level. But again, with uh, sockets and things, I'm sure that sort of thing can be implemented. And uh, Christopher is asking if you can place controls using percentages. So can you put like four controls on a Zojo window and each take up, say, 25% of the space and have that render properly? Uh, that varies a little bit. If you're, de if you're designing iOS apps, uh, it uses auto layout. So you, can, you have quite a bit more flexibility in control positioning and how things auto adjust. So you can end up with uh, controls that are using just a certain percentage of the displays. I believe we have an iOS example that shows you how to do that. On the desktop side, you can't specifically put in this control should just display 25% as a property, but it's super easy to have in uh, one of the event handlers, uh, particularly like on a window. You may use, say, the resized event handler so that when the window's resized, you can loop through any controls you need to move and adjust their size and reposition them. That's pretty easy to do. So the example we looked at, like I mentioned earlier, we call Eddie's Electronics. There is a web demo that's online on our site, demos.zojo.com. This is running on Zojo Cloud, so you can connect to it and play around with it if you want to see how that works when it's live on the internet. But of course, the full source code for all of these are included with Zojo itself. Uh, when you launch Zojo, you can just, in that project chooser, click on examples and then go to the sample applications folder. And in there, you'll find, in addition to Eddie's Electronics, lots of other sample applications. But there's a whole lot of other examples including included with Zojo as well. Uh, you know, I actually haven't counted them up recently. I bet I'm over 400 at this point. But there's definitely at least 350 examples that are included with Zojo for you to test out and run and modify and see how you might be able to use them. In addition to that, there are over 80 community open source projects, primarily on GitHub, with the, the vibrant Zojo community adding stuff pretty regularly lately. I'm getting a lot of emails from people telling me they just made a new project that they submitted to GitHub and uh, add it to our list, which is available on our Dev Center page. So lots of activity on that front for examples and code that can help you make your apps quickly. So really, I mean, you should at least take a look at Zojo, see what it can help you do when you need to make apps. Zojo.com slash download will let you download Zojo quickly. I, I always get a kick out of telling people you probably be able to download Zojo and install Zojo before installers for some other tools even finish. Uh, the last time I installed Visual Studio, I think it took at least half an hour. And Zojo, unless you're using, you know, a, an old school telephone download, will download very quickly and installs in just a couple minutes. But there are more than 200,000 people using Zojo around the world. And with Zojo, you get to use a single tool to make many types of apps. So you don't have to necessarily learn variety of different technologies and figure out how to hook them all together to just get an app that will help you be more efficient with what you're doing. And we pride ourselves on simplicity first. We want to make Zojo approachable, easy to use, and make it so that you can build what you need. And all that comes together to just essentially say that Zojo allows you to develop faster. 
And I mentioned before, it's free to use, so you can download it, run it, play around with it, make some apps, try it out. And once you see how quickly you can start building stuff with it, you can buy a license so that you can share your apps with the world. And as I like to say, Socho is fun to use. It's, it's, you know, lots of tools can make apps, of course. There's plenty of tools that can make apps, but you don't want to fight with your tool. You don't want to dread using it. And Socho is fun. And I do want to let people know that we do have a developer conference, typically yearly. And our conference for 2018 is in Denver, Colorado this year, April 25th to 27th. If you sign up by February 15th, you do get to save $100. This is multi-day conference. Lots of people attend. Lots of sessions, 35-ish sessions or so, put on by Zojo staff, engineers. And in addition to that, the community. So you get a, quite a wide variety of topics and presenters. You can head over to zojo.com slash xdc to find out more information, see who's presenting, see some of the topics. If there's something of interest to you, we would love to see you there. So I recommend, of course, that you get started with Zojo today. Zojo.com slash download. Immediately, you can start playing around with it. There are also some free books available to maybe help you out. We have an introduction to programming book. If you haven't really done any significant programming in the past, but are thinking that you might want to learn, you can go to zojo.com slash learn, grab that book. If you're interested in the Raspberry Pi, one of the coolest little gadgets to come out in recent years, we have a free book that comes with a bunch of examples that shows you how to make apps to run on the Raspberry Pi and a, little, a few projects that you can hook up to the Raspberry Pi and control with Zojo. So you can find that at our Dev Center site, developer.zojo.com slash pi book. Zojo has a very vibrant user community. Our user forum is at forum.zojo.com. You can also head over there to ask the opinion of others that use Zojo ask questions, share your thoughts. Great place to hang out. And of course, the Zojo Dev Center at developer.zojo.com. I've mentioned a few links to that already, but that is kind of our central repository for everything Zojo. So you can head over there, see the full user guide, the full reference guide, find links to open source projects, videos, 100 plus videos, all that stuff over at the developer.zojo.com dev center. So that's a quick overview of Zojo, so you can see kind of what it can do at a very high level. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Paul Lefevre. You can always reach me, paul at zojo.com, via email if you have a question at any time. Find me on Twitter, at Lefevre. Happy to answer any questions I can. You can download Zojo, and if you do end up wanting to purchase a license, you can use the code NEW2018 and save 10%. So that's great. Everybody loves to save money. I want to thank everyone for attending the Zojo webinar. Have a great day.